So, Professor Clements with you here. We're investigating uh, induced EMF, induced current. This relates to chapter 23 of the OpenStax College physics textbook. In this situation, we have a coil of wire with 26 turns of wire, radius of 12 centimeters, has a particular resistance. The important feature on its orientation, imagine it laying flat on a table in the room where you are. And imagine that uh, some external means, a magnetic field is created. It's directed upward through the coil and exactly upward. So the magnetic field is perpendicular to the plane of the coil. The magnetic field would be parallel to the area vector that uh, extends out perpendicular to the plane of the coil. And at uh, a start at time equals zero seconds, we have a strength of the magnetic field, 2.4 times 10 to the minus 3 Tesla. 1.7 seconds later, we've got an increased strength of the magnetic field. And we want to calculate the value of the induced EMF. And we want to indicate the direction of the induced current. So I'd like you to pause the video now and make your own sketch of this situation. Hopefully you have a coil and perhaps you have a magnetic field labeled with B. The important feature would be the circle with a dot giving us a representation of the direction of the magnetic field. So we're interested in calculating the size of the EMF. We um, obtain that number, that EMF number, as minus N, the number of turns in the coil, times the rate of change of the magnetic flux. How much did the magnetic flux change in a given time interval? So that's our Faraday's law. We can find the induced EMF number by multiplying the number of turns of the coil times the change of the magnetic flux divided by the length of time for that change to occur. In this uh, calculation, it is important to know how to find the value of the magnetic flux. And that's the strength of the magnetic field, the area, and the cosine of the angle between the magnetic field and the perpendicular to the area. In this case, the two are parallel. So our angle is zero degrees. And this cosine of zero will produce a factor of one. So we won't worry about that anymore. Um, so let's continue with our calculation here. In our calculation, we are going to have N. And expanding out this, what this change of flux means, we'll have the uh, magnetic field final value times area, and then a factor of 1 for a cosine of 0 degrees, and then minus magnetic field initial times area and then the time interval. This is the change of flux, the final flux minus the initial flux. In this problem, the area is constant. So we can simplify this a little bit more and factor out the area. So I'd have final magnetic field minus initial magnetic field in the uh, bracket and the time interval. Our Area is going to be pi r squared with the radius uh, converted to meters. The radius is 12 centimeters, so we'll use 0.12 uh, meters for that. So let's go ahead and uh, put in some numbers now and head towards a uh, numerical result now that we have the concepts under control. So our EMF minus, there's 26 turns of wire. We have pi r squared for the area. Again, 12 centimeters was the radius. And then we have our magnetic fields to account for. The final magnetic field, 3.9 10 to the minus 3 Teslas. And the initial magnetic field, 2.4 times 10 to the minus 3 Teslas. And again, I'm doing a delta type calculation here. Final magnetic field minus initial magnetic field produces the change of flux. And this change, we were told, took uh, 1.7 seconds. So at this point, you should uh, pause the video, 
and you should pull out your calculator and go ahead and uh, see what you come up with for a result. So go ahead and pause the video and try this calculation. I came up with minus 1.04 times 10 to the minus 3 volts or 1.04 millivolts. The minus sign is not real important at this stage. Um, we're just seeing the size of the EMF, how many volts are here. The minus sign here reminds us of Lenz's law, which uh, deals with the direction of the induced EMF. And Lenz's law is going to be employed in the following way. If we think about what's occurring here on this diagram, the magnetic field is getting stronger So the flux is increasing and we know that Lenz's law says that the direction of the induced current will be such as to oppose the change that's taking place. The magnetic flux is increasing. How will we uh, try to limit or minimize the increase of the magnetic flux through this coil? Well, there's going to be an induced current that will generate a magnetic field for the coil. And this magnetic field needs to oppose the original magnetic field. Our flux is increasing. Lenz's law says we're going to oppose the change that's taking place. So we need a magnetic field generated by the current. I'll label it B2, a magnetic field generated by the current as opposed to B1 is the original external magnetic field. So now it's time to use the right hand rule and determine the direction of the current. Is it clockwise or counterclockwise? Again you should pause the video. Well, let's try this one. Let's suppose that the induced current runs clockwise. If you put your right hand on this with the thumb of the right hand in the direction of the current, you'll find that your fingers do indeed point downward at the area. So by using right hand rule, we find that the induced current direction is clockwise. We found the magnitude of the current, uh, sorry, of the EMF. If we wanted to calculate the current, then we take the EMF divided by the resistance. We're not going to bother in doing that. So Keep reviewing uh, right hand rule, keep reviewing Faraday's law and the calculation of EMF. In this situation, the number of turns was constant, the area was constant, it was the magnetic field changing that uh, gave us the EMF.